Good Monday, makers. It's time for another episode of our weekly build roundup series at Maker Pipe Monday. We do this every week to showcase community projects. We highlight different techniques and just different ideas for using EMT conduit and connectors and other ordinary materials. Hope you guys enjoy this series and hope you're ready to check out the builds. Let's jump right into it. First up is this project from Ben. And I should say this is not just a project because this, as you can see, is just an amazing group of trellises that he put together. And it looks like he's in paradise or something. I have no clue where this is. But as you can see, he's got this garden for dragon fruit plants. And it just looks so nice and beautiful there. And these dragon fruits are awesome. I don't think I've ever really seen a dragon fruit plant up close before. But here it is. And he built this trellis support for all these different plants, uh, these dragon fruit plants, with EMT conduit and maker pipe and some other interesting techniques. And here you can kind of see the design. He said he just got one of the hand benders that you can get or at, at Lowe's or Home Depot or Ace Hardware or online. And he basically bent this these halves here and then joined them together with the 180 degree connector, as you can see there. And within that 180 degree connector, he also added a tall vertical that has a 90 degree bend on it. And basically these verticals just go up and technically, I guess, down into this crate. Uh, I actually just used some of these crates for moving recently. They're really handy for a lot of things, but you can get them at Lowe's or Home Depot. They're not too expensive. And basically, I think he's got soil in there to, or for the plants to grow out of, of course. And as you can see, the dragon fruit plants just grab onto these verticals, grow up, and then at the very top, they sprout, or not sprout, I guess, but bloom, whatever you want to call it. And the dragon fruit plant is growing nice and big there, as you can see, and it's yielding some fruit. And it's just super cool and a really great design. And we have a full kind of a tutorial bending uh, or full conduit bending tutorial on our YouTube channel, which I'll link down below in case you want to check out that and learn the basics. But this is just a really awesome project. And a really cool thing I wanted to highlight was it looks like he's got some sort of um, sleeving over top of the conduit, as you can see there. kind of looks like a vacuum hose or something. Not entirely sure why that's there. Maybe it's just meant to be a barrier between the plant and the conduit. Not entirely sure, but something really interesting to keep in mind. Uh, you know, we've got the shrink wrap on the website and you know, we've talked about painting conduit, but you know, you might have other reasons that you might want to find some other um, solutions that put you, you know, put over top of conduit, whether it's for just a barrier between plants or you want to change the color of it or whatever the reason may be. We've also seen people put a garden hose over conduit, which is really interesting. Uh, so, you know, be on the lookout for other things you might be able to to put over top of conduit if you, you need to for your specific project. But what's really cool is you can see here he cast, and it looks like cement blocks that the trellis is sitting in as well. So this cement block is gonna provide some really great support and uh, kind of rigidity to the structure so it doesn't tip over once the plants grow. Cause I would imagine, as you can see there, the plant gets really big. It's a lot of weight on top and you don't want that thing to be top heavy and tip over. So this is just really cool. And it's just really beautiful. Love seeing all these different photos. And there you can see the parts for it. Just 180 degree connector goes in the middle of those two halves, like we said. And then the vertical bends uh, go in the middle of the 180, or I guess it would be here. And then, you know, goes down into that soil box that he made with those plastic totes. But really awesome build. Thanks so much, Ben, for sharing that original idea last year and then following it up this year with the plants. It's really cool to see all the fruit that you're, you're yielding. And it's just uh, some beautiful pictures and everything. So thanks so much. Really cool to see. Next up is a review from Steve, and this is a really cool frame. As you can see there, he's got a nice boat, enjoys some time out on the water, and he wanted to add uh, a canopy over the people sitting in the boat and also add some solar panels. This is really cool. We'll kind of go through and look at the pictures here. So this is the frame that he's got, and he also did some bending. He did a bend uh, here on the front part that actually connects to the, uh, the conduit that goes down and he used a coupling to join that together. So if you kind of imagine this is broken up into the, the mounts for the boat, he's got the adjustable angle flange, it looks like, on the front of the boat. And that goes up, and then a coupling connects the, the main part of the, the structure, which is this. And he added some bins there. It looks like maybe uh, like 35 degrees or 30 degrees, somewhere around there. I don't know exactly, but um, it looks like that goes up. And then there's a, a long pipe that goes to the back. And then from there, he used T-connectors 
to add some cross supports that kind of pulled the sunshade tight. And he added a little bend in there as well to just provide just a little bit of a pitch to the, the sunshade, which is a good idea. And then here you can see he's got the canvas in place. It looks like he maybe had to cut it and kind of custom fit it to the frame, which I would imagine so what you're kind of working within the constraints of the size of the boat. Uh, and if you can't find a canopy that's perfect, then you have to make one yourself. So it looks like he was fitting that there. And then here you can see he added grommets all the way around and decided to do the method where you basically build a frame that's a little bit larger than the sunshade that you're putting inside of it. And then you use uh, ball bungees, or in this case, he's got some rope kind of routed through and around the conduit and through the grommets all the way around. And you pull that tight and it just kind of, you know, pulls everything together out and just kind of stretches out that fabric. And there you can see um, that in place. And then he added some flexible solar panels as well. It looks like those are just pulled tight to the frame using the same paracord, uh, which is a good idea. And looks like it should be pretty rigid um, on there. And then you can see all completed. Here it is in place on the boat. Looks like he used some of the standard rigid flanges in the back. And then like we said, uh, he's got the adjustable flanges in the front, but really great project. Really great techniques incorporated into it, and it looks like it's working out well. So thanks so much for sharing that, and I uh, really appreciate you posting it. Next up is a build from Jesse, and this is really cool. This is a cage for the back of a Can-Am side-by-side, as you can see here. And I really love it when it works out perfect for you guys when the connectors fit around something round that you already have. In this case, it's the side-by-side. And you can see they have this rail on the back. And I don't even know why they put these rails there. Maybe it's meant to be like a tie down point for like a ratchet strap or something. Maybe it's made specifically for the rack that they make for these. I'm not sure, but he said that the racks that you can find for this that are already made are expensive. And um, I can imagine so. And he wanted to build one because he wanted to be able to take his dogs with him whenever he goes for a ride, which is great. And so what he did was he built it with maker pipe. And as you can see, the T-connectors fit around the diameter of this, uh, this you know, tube that's built into the side-by-side. -side. And once he was connected there, all he had to do is just build the rest of the frame. Looks like he's got some bins incorporated into his build as well. And he just used T-connectors to kind of build this framework around the outside of the, uh, the bed on the back of the side-by-side. -side. And I think he used half-inch EMT, it looks like. And then a series of T connectors just kind of, you know, in different places to build out this, uh, the walls of the cage. And then I think the gate, uh, he just kept it nice and simple. It looks like he used the quick clamps. And that looks, wait, is that, oh, I wonder if that is an added safety thing that he did, or not really a safety thing, I guess, but just like an added latch. It looks like he got one of those pins that kind of goes through, I don't know if it goes through the bolt hole. No, cause he's got a quick clamp there. Not entirely sure, but it looks like he's got like a, a pin there. You know, one of those, I forget what they're called, but it's basically just a bolt with a pin that loops around and goes back through and you pull it out. And then, you know, it just adds another measure of, uh, of, of latching. It looks like he added that to the connector, but it looks like he's got quick clamps holding the connector together so he can just undo those and take the gate off. And he just added some uh, straps there just as another measure of security for keeping the gate attached, which is a good idea. You can never be too safe. And all in all, just looks really awesome. And now he's able to take his dogs out with him when he goes for a ride. So really cool. Thanks so much, Jesse, for sharing that. Really awesome build. Next up is a build from Cindy. And this is really cool. This is another boat build, but it's a little bit different because this isn't attached to the boat all the time. This is just meant to be a, co a cover if you're doing some winterization, I know right now it's summertime and you're probably out there enjoying your boats, but when you're putting them away for the winter or even if you're storing them for just a few weeks or something, you want to put a cover. And this is a really great idea. It looks like they have some uh, square tubing coming out from underneath the, the, the dock here. And in the top of it, it looks like it's just open inside. And so they just put conduit resting inside of those square tubing bars that are coming up. And the conduit just sits inside nicely. And then from there, they were just able to use various connectors. Looks like adjustable angles for the side to create that pitch roof. And then they've got T connectors in the middle where all of the uh, kind of roof bars go up and connect to one long ridge pole. And basically just did that same thing on the other side. 
and then now they can stretch out their fabric over top of it and they've got a nice cover and uh, canopy that's going to be good for winterization if you want to just add some protection to your boat in the winter or like I said even if it's just for a few days or a few weeks during the, the boating season and here you can see kind of a shot of all the different materials that they've used um, the you know the conduit looks like three quarter inch and then of course all the T connectors and maker pipe fittings and uh, looks like they use the flange hack that we talked about a while back on the channel oh and this is their trailer this isn't the this isn't like a dock or something this is their trailer so that's really cool and uh, yeah really awesome build thanks so much for sharing this looks like a great idea and they said they were hoping to make something that they could uh, take apart whenever they're not using it and with all they have to do is undo the five millimeter hex wrench and then put it back together whenever they're ready. So really cool. Cindy, thanks so much for sharing that. You did a great job. Next up is a build from David. And this is really awesome. This is an epic greenhouse. It's 12 foot wide, 24 foot long, and 11 feet high. It's really awesome. So much involved in this. It's really cool. And a lot of people ask for greenhouse builds. And this is another great example. And uh, there's so many good techniques incorporated into this. As you can see, and as we saw with the 12 by 24 by 11, it's a really good size, so you really got to brace it appropriately and add a lot of support, and that's exactly what they did. And the way they did it is really smart. Triangles are used in building no matter what material you're using. They're the, the best way or one of the best ways to brace something. And so making triangles and adding them to your build is a really simple way to think about bracing. And you can see, basically, the, the walls go up from this uh, you know, wood paneling that they've got going all the way around. And I, I'm not sure if this is meant to be just a garden bed or if they just put this here specifically for the greenhouse. Um, but the conduit goes off of there. And basically, they've just got walls made with all the verticals. And it looks like a lot of T connectors. And then wherever they needed bracing, they just added 45 degree connectors or adjustable angles. And it looks like T's using uh, yeah, T connectors in this way is something we've talked about a few times. And it's a really good thing to keep in mind if you have T connectors and you're doing something like this where you've got a horizontal pipe that you need to connect a pipe to and it needs to be at any angle, you can use the T connector in that. You just you know, put the T connector wherever you want to, you know, that angle to be and then tighten it and then the T connector will be at that angle as you can see here. And that's a good technique to keep in mind when you're doing stuff like this. But then you can see it looks like those T's send a pipe all the way up and connect to adjustable angle connectors and they've got just a lot of triangles in here. And then there's even, you know, some vertical pipes that go to the ridge down to those braces. And there's some crossover clamps with some long pipes between the uh, kind of the truss design here. And there's so many great techniques and this is kind of like a master class in brace, bracing. And that's really the key to doing structures like this and doing large projects in general. You just want to think about, uh, you know, bracing and, and adding supports. You know, you might look at a material like three quarter inch empty conduit and think it's not very capable, but it is if you brace it accordingly. And we're going to do a video on bracing soon. I've been working on it for a while, just trying to get everything uh, all wrapped up and concise into a nice video. So we'll do that. So keep on the lookout for that. But that's all the builds I have for you this week. Thanks so much, David, for sharing that greenhouse. And thanks to everybody for posting your builds. As always, we love seeing them. So keep posting them and sending them to us. And we'll keep doing these episodes. Hope you all have a good week. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.